All right, so welcome everybody to um, the teaching and learning call for November 17th, 2021. And um, we are going to have a demo today from, from Dr. Chuck. He's going to show us the assignments LTI improvements that um, are hot off the press. that are just now getting merged in, um, and they're going to be merged back to version 21, it looks like, too. So, um, so that's exciting stuff. If you saw his talk at the virtual conference last week, he didn't really have time to do a full demo. So this will be more of a um, complete experience and uh, a little more time for questions. And then um, the remainder of the hour, we will spend um, going over some of our JIRAs in the sort of JIRA parking lot list here. There was one in particular that Christina and Tiffany have both requested that we talk about. So we'll probably hit that one first. Um, so if you've not already signed in, please do. The Etherpad link is in the chat. And um, just by way of announcements, um, we did have the Sakai Virtual Conference last week. It was very successful. We had about 200 people there. Um, we raised a little over $11,000 um, in proceeds towards Sakai development. Um, and the video recordings from the sessions will be posted to the Sakai YouTube channel very soon. I'm trying to get them up this week, um, but we've had a, a lot of other long site deadlines too, so I haven't had much chance to, to chop up video. Um, but I will try to get those up this week so people have them before Thanksgiving. So um, look for a note about that when those uh, videos are available. And if you did attend and you've not already filled out your conference evaluation, please do. I'm going to send a reminder link about that. Um, but we do try to improve the event every year. So if you have any feedback, um, good or bad, uh, please uh, let us know in the evaluation form so we can take that into consideration for the next go round. Um, so, does anybody else have any announcements before we move on? Okay, um, so let's see. It looks like Dr. Chuck is here, so we'll go ahead and um, start off with the demo. And, and Chuck, I'm gonna make you presenter so you can share your screen if you like. Okay, let me get set up. <clears throat> um, while, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so does anybody have any questions while I'm uh, getting set up here? Is anybody using the assignments LTI um, submission type yet at their institutions? Everybody says not yet. Um, yeah, they're still on 20. Oh, this is all good news. Thank yeah. you. That's a great question to ask. Yeah, I think because it's fairly new, not a lot of people have. Yeah, I mean, so for those of you who weren't in the core team yesterday, um, okay, I'll, I'll share my screen now. I think it's ready to go. If I find where that shares, where did I put the shares? Oh, there it is. Oop. Screen one. Screen two. Screen two. Yes. Okay. I'll move big blue button to the other screen so I can watch that. Um, and so here we are. I think you can see my stuff. Okay. So, um, so basically the, uh, I, the idea here, what was to add a new kind of an assignment type, um, So LTI has this concept of placements, and, and you can put LTI in a rich text editor, you can put LTI in lessons, you can put LTI in the left navigation, 
And the assignment is uh, one of the sort of expected ways that LMS can put them. And so as of Sakai 21, this external tool LTI option was there. So one of the things you'll first notice is that um, it hides some things and adds some notes. It's like when you create assignment type, it launches a general tool, not all assignment features are available. Unsupported features are hidden. And so, so it sort of flashes some things on and off. Um, part of the thing that I'll be talking about is, um, well, first you, let's pick a tool. I'll just pick a tool. And I'm gonna start by picking the trophy tool, which is, really the simplest of tools. Where would the trophy go? Uh, could you maybe refresh your screen? I, I'm seeing kind of a weird choppy, like there's okay. one part that's actually moving and the rest of it is sort of frozen in the background. Um, okay, how about I just de-share and reshare? Yeah, maybe that would be a little better. Better? Yeah, much yeah. better. Okay. Can I have trophy in this server? That'll teach me. Okay, well, I'll just put the sticky grader in. Okay. So, um, so the, the first problem that we have with LTI and assignments that I, that I didn't really do, do solve very well in the first release in 21.0 was um, the fact that LTI used to send everything to the gradebook. And now with 21.2 or 3, what, what is the version that's going to be? Is it 21.2 that's going to have this in it? Wilma? Yeah, yeah, 21.2. Yeah, and so as of 21.2, I actually store the data inside assignments, so it's much more like another assignment rather than this weird thing that mostly just launches and sends data to the gradebook. The problem is, is that assignments has this workflow, and uh, LTI tools, at least most of the LTI tools that are out there, don't understand that any kind of workflow other than I'll send a grade. And so um, the way, and, and, uh, and part of what I'm here for, and I expect to come back, um, is I want you, I want to ask you questions about how things should actually work once you have a basic understanding. But you're going to see in the student view that if I don't turn on, I'll, I'll leave allow resubmission off for now, and you'll see what kind of happens here. And this is something that Andrea and Wilma and I are talking about, and I could really use your advice. So I'm going to turn off allow resubmission off, and I'll give it 100 points, and I'll send grades to the gradebook and create a new gradebook item. And so there we go. So I'll post this. And if I take a look at sticky grader 2, you see we've got some students here, right? And, um, and they don't have a submission. So I'm gonna switch over to a student view. Ooh, is my screen messing up again? Yeah, it's when you move the windows around, it tends to like not all refresh or something. Hmm. Okay, so I will I'll maximize, Jordy. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I'll just have to tab back and forth and maximize. Oh, wait, now I've got to go to, how do I get to my other screens then? Okay. There we go. So let's go in and see what this looks like as a student. So sticky grader two is not started. And so um, sticky grader is, a, is the tool that I have taught the most about some advanced 
LTI protocol features. So let me just show you what Sticky Grader is. And this go to external tool, this is this thing that you're going to see disappear when I don't allow multiple submissions. And so, so now you're going to go on LTI and all this status about submitted and returned is pretty well supported um, because the grades are going to assignments and then there's other data in assignments other than just a grade. Whereas when grades are going to gradebook in 21.0 and 21.1, um, none of this made any sense. And these were just like always broken, right? They never reflected anything. They're not perfect yet, but now they at least reflect it. So the student's going to go into this tool. And um, this tool is a tool that Wilma has wanted for a long time. Um, it's an LTI Tsugi tool. And uh, this is the student's view. And the idea is is that um, the student is going to upload a PDF. And the idea here is to create a, a more interactive, um, just like if, if you turned in a paper and you could scribble on the paper. And so um, we'll just start here with the, 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 the student view and the student just turned their paper in, right? So now I'm gonna switch to the teacher view And if I go back into Sticky Grader 2 here, we see that there is a submission. So there is a submission. So the way that happened is that I changed, I changed, um, I, I changed this. I changed the tool when it actually receives a submission to send a grade of zero with a status of submitted, which it turns out that the concept of submissions, let me see if I can find, uh, let me see if I can find the spec. So it turns out there are these things that have been in uh, the grade for a long time in the grade API that this is the, this is IMS documentation and I if a tool is smart enough and no tools currently do this to my knowledge except sticky grader because no LMS has respected these values and so you can send an activities progress or grading progress but both and if you look at this you know, it's initialized, it started, it's in progress, it's submitted, it's been completed. So this is all about what the student has done. And the answer is, holy crap, this feels a lot like how assignments thinks about state. And so by doing what I did in 21.2, I now can build tools that send all these statuses and then assignments can understand them. And then there's this grading progress, whether it's fully graded, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind of, um, it's a way for me to communicate from my tool things like submitted ungraded. And now if I go into this thing, and again, I'm sending an LTI message back. Uh, There we go. So just so you know, this is a frame. And this is another feature that's part of IMS that's a currently unreleased feature. The submission review service. No, I gotta log in because it's a secret. So this is a submission review service, and this is not, uh, uh, not currently an unreleased spec IMS specification. And I have built this into Sakai, and it'll be there in 21.2, and there's a little signaling mechanism in the protocol. But basically what's going on here is I am not deep linking, I, I am deep launching into the grade for the student. Instead of just launching to the tool. So if I was to show you how this tool works, 
by itself. And I was just to play with this in a test mode. If you're going to run this normally, and a student is going to upload a file, the teacher would do a normal launch to the tool, and this is what the teacher sees. But the teacher has this instructor button that can go look at the student data and look at the submissions. Now, this is all inside the LTI tool. And so the instructor can now grade this student and annotate their submission and post it notes. So this, that's the whole idea is you put post-it notes on stuff, right? And then, of course, the student can go back and that student can see the post-it note. And the student can say, um, thank you, and add their own post-it note from Sue. And then I can go back to the teacher, but the teacher doesn't go straight to the student page, but instead has to go into this thing in student data. And anything that I'm doing with that teachers are involved in the grading inside the LTI tool, I use the same UI. And so this is the link straight to the student where you're doing view annotate submission, right? And so you kind of see the, the back and forth. But with this new feature, Sakai knows that it wants to, Sakai knows two things. It knows that it wants to see a particular student's submission, and it wants to launch straight to that submission. And so you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of sort of suppressed things. So if I go back to the, what the, the teacher sees, if it's not using this special launch, the teacher can upload their file, they can go back and forth, they can go do all this stuff, they can see all the students. And so I hide all that. This tool is smart enough to know that it's been launched in this per student context. And so the student, the teacher can annotate the submission. This is cool. And then if I go, um, I go back, I can send a grade, 42. And then that updates that. And then I can go back into the student, no, not that, it's back below here, go back into the student. In the student view, so here's here's the problem, and this is this is something that we, we got to figure out. And at some point, I will want. So it's been in progress and it's submitted, right? And um, uh, and so he, this is the problem because, and Wilma, I'm talking to you here too. So you and Andrew can tell me I'm just crazy and I should always put this button up but what I did is in Sakai if you say back to assignments and if you say it's not great not great edit if you say only one submission no resubmissions allowed it hides that button for students because they've submitted a thing right what what do we do right so you might want to allow unlimited submissions for LTI assignments so students can launch the tool multiple times. Each tool may have a different behavior in regards to what constitutes a submission. But we, it's got a grade, and so it thinks I've, I've got a submission. But now the student can't see their work. So I think the smart thing to do is until you know that you really like the workflow of the tool, you probably need to set it to always be unlimited submissions. And that's why I put this note here. So now if I, if I set that to unlimited submissions, then it works a little better. And so now the student can go in and see their thing, and they can go back. But what they really wanted to see in the first place was the sticky grader that their teacher put up. And so I'm sort of torn. I'm torn because if you're not supposed, if once it's submitted, you're not supposed to let the student do it again, but they can't see it, right? And so, Wilma, I'm talking to you here, right? And yeah, you can yeah, there needs to be a way. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go. Somebody, 
Um, there needs to be a way for the student to get in to see the feedback because that's the only place that they're going to see it. Yeah, and I think we're going to have to, you know, on, we're just going to have to say unlimited submission. I don't, I don't know, or or we just. Or we just for, decide. For now, for now, it's going to have to be unlimited submissions, but we need to try to find another way. To There's no way that I, at this moment, that I can tell this tool, don't let the student make another submission. I can, all I can do is say, don't let the student launch. Right? And, and right now, the way this tool happens to work is it's got its own internal sub resubmission logic. So if you go back over here, this tool, if I go into Sticky Grader 2, whoa, what just happened? I go in here and I launch into the student and on the teacher, I can actually allow them to resubmit. And say okay, and then I can blast them, give them a grade of zero. And now if I go into the window for the student and I hit refresh here, it's been reset. But literally, there is no good way for me to communicate that back to Sakai and to communicate, for Sakai to communicate, what am I doing here? Gosh. Uh, there is no way for Sakai to communicate whether or not Sakai feels like there's additional submissions allowed. And so, I mean, and so this is why I need to talk to this group of people, right? Um, just because is there is there something that the instructor could do manually like after they do the LTI grading so the tool can't tell Sakai that no more submissions are allowed but the instructor could um, so I'm just well, wondering if there's some sort of checkbox or something that would kind of flag it as on or I don't know. I mean, we still need well, to wait for kind of have that, We have the checkbox, right? And 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 in we kind of have a checkbox, and it's really not unlimited. It's not really unlimited submissions, right? That checkbox says once there is a. I mean, this is like once there there is a submission lock lock it lock stop further launches after the student has submitted is really what this means in lti but it's not what people think it means. i mean that's what not people have. so if if this if it, the only way i can guarantee the student can never make another resubmission is um not let them back into the tool But not letting the student back into the tool might just be terrible, and we might just decide that um, I'm supposed to ignore this. I'm supposed to ignore this checkbox and always let the student back in. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Gary's that? typing, and I'm really and eagerly anticipating what she's going to say, and then she stops typing. Okay, I'll talk. <laughs> Is there a way, just kind of a different thing, to take the uh, submission with the feedback and import it into a different place so that it can be seen outside of the LTI tool, like, like sending it into, back into assignments or something like that, so, uh, or someplace else? Terry, that's that's one of the other outstanding bugs that we have, and that is that if you notice over here, um, oh, oh no, that I'm, I got to go back to student. 
Oh, no, I got to uh, I got to upload a new thing so we can grade it again. <coughs> so now I can go back to be the teacher. So <clears throat> am I stuck here? Reload this and it works. Okay, so if you actually go to a student that does not have a submission, you get this right hand nav bar. The problem is, if you go to the student that does have a submission, if you send a grade like 99 and you submit it or you delete, you do allow, you know, send a resubmit note that left nav bar didn't get updated. And that's because we got to build some additional code. Sakai knows the new score, but it didn't update the left navigation. So until we could fix that, which is going to be a Sakai 22 only feature, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to hide this nav bar. And wow, my, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to do something. I'm going to switch to seven. I'm going to switch to a smaller screen resolution. I don't know if that'll help us. That doesn't help. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll do this. I'll move it to screen one instead. Maybe that will be better. Okay. So the so the problem is that we don't have it updated. What would be really good? Um, Terry to do it is to have it work like this and have this right hand side thing and as soon as you type something over here the comment would be right and the grade would be right and it turns out I've got all that flow working right then but the problem that happens once I've got that flow working is this kind of save and release to student actually that logic would work um, but then the logic of allow a new resubmission if you go back to assignments and you go go to grade and you say where is it oh set resubmissions for multiple students I, I i don't have a way i just well if i turn resubmissions off then i can override it here and that actually works the student gets another button to click um when they go in but there's just no way for me to coordinate between what Sakai thinks about resubmissions and what the tool thinks about resubmissions and resubmission possibilities. So that's, and, and this is where um, part of what we're trying to do is get this back to 21.2 with these flaws in place and perhaps the need to, um, perhaps the need to, most of the time, set it for unlimited submissions. Right? It just works better when you do unlimited submissions, and the, re the stopping resubmission is going to be kind of a special case. Um, and then, 
work some more with the tools. And so this whole thing works a little differently if the tool is not uh, quite so smart. Um, and and th we're working with the smartest tool, the one that informs about submissions. Uh, simpler tools. Let me let me try another. Let me try. Another. Yeah, I mean, it seems right now there's no spec in LTI to tell for the tool to tell the LMS how many submissions are allowed. Right? Or for the LMS to tell the tool how many submissions are allowed. Or for the right. LMS tool that the the teacher has given the student one, this particular student, one more submission. Yeah, it seems like if we could add a spec that does that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that would solve it. Yeah, we're, um, we're, we're a year or two ahead of any other LMS on this particular thing. Yeah, and, but if we could add that to specific tools, like your sticky grader, if you added a spec that's not in IMS yet, but um, oh, provides yeah. that information and then have Sakai already recognize it even before it's official. Now you're going down an interesting path, Wilma, that I, that I had not thought about until this moment. But that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. And I, I am not... let other people catch up later. And I am not above doing that with the express purpose of building an amazing sticky grader, right? So make the sticky grader and other friends like the sticky grader. I've got a peer grader that's really cool. I've got a CK editor grader that's really cool. Um, and if, if your recommendation is that I build a few little extensions that when those tools see those extensions come by, um, bada boom, bada bing, right? Yeah. Um, that I can do and I will. That's a really good idea because your goal and my goal, I think, are the same, Wilma, in that we want to be able to make assignments work wonderfully and not have to keep changing Sakai code every time we want to invent a new assignment type. Because this really makes it so we can whip up a real quick assignment type that has this assignments-like interaction. And honestly, Wilma, you're right in that everyone will want to catch up. And the best way to get folks to catch up is for us to demonstrate how cool it is. And then people are like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll turn that into a, a stock thing. Because no one's using this feature. We're the first to use it, so. So, okay, and I think, I mean, we've gone 35, uh, 35 minutes, and so I think I probably should uh, stop demoing. We can talk a bit more, but um, uh, I, this is, I think this might be the first time I've ever come to the teaching and learning group. And I realize that's a terrible mistake on my part because I do sit here as I develop things. And I think in my mind, I wish Wilma were here right now in Zoom and I could just turn to her and ask her a question about something. And, and, and then I think to myself, well, Wilma's way too busy. She, she's not gonna have time for me or we're gonna, it'll take a week to schedule it. And then, and I think that all the time, right? I think. Yeah, well, I, I'm not that busy. You can always, no. you can always message me. But what, um, what I realized, yeah, we'd love to, is, we'd love to have you come back. So anytime. Right, and what I realized, idea, Wilma, is, yeah. is my dream of having a, a chance to just ask Wilma a question, actually happens once a week, and it's every Wednesday at uh, ten o'clock in the morning, and it's not just Wilma that I can ask questions of. I can ask questions of like a whole group of people. Yeah. <laughs> Although not it's, just, only, it's not every Wednesday. It's twice monthly. But oh, it's, it's okay. twice. It's okay. Two weeks, twice, two weeks a month. On but the, I, the number of these questions that I have are not like every hour on the hour. I mean, I've been struggling with the, the things we, two things we talked about today. I've been struggling with that for months, two months now, because I knew, <laughs> I knew the brick wall I was going to run into because I understand the protocol and I understand how Sakai works. And I'm like, I'm going to run into this brick wall. Help me drive around it, right? So, so Wilma, what we'll do then is we'll get this merged, and it's already it's already in twenty one X, and I think Andrea is testing it today, and we will understand that it is flawed, way less flawed than twenty one dot zero, um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't it won't break anything because it sort of was pretty unusable in twenty one dot zero, and so a lot of people weren't using it, and you know. 
never buy a General Motors car built on a Monday. And so, no, you know, people are want to go to a later release and 21.2 will come out quick. And then what we can do is once we've got 21.2 out, circle back, put in some feature requests, come back and talk with this group again and, um, and, and, uh, and, and make some real progress. And uh, I will move away from this obsession that's if it's not in the standard, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you um, doing the demo and showing people who hadn't seen it. And, and definitely, definitely, anytime you have a question about you know, what would be the ideal workflow, um, just let me or Charles know. We're happy to put you on the agenda for the teaching and learning call, whichever is coming up you know, next and um, have you come back and do a quick demo and just talk about stuff, ask people questions, because that's what we do in this call most of the time. So um, that's great. And I'm really glad you could join us this week. Thanks. Does anybody have any other questions for Chuck while we have him? No, they're all too stunned and amazed by the <laughs> vast improvement in assignment LTI. If, if you saw the original one, you would see what a big step forward this is, because there were a lot of broken pieces in the original um, that made it very hard to navigate. And so well, it, it really, uh, it, the, the, the original one really ignored almost all of the assignments workflow and most of the assignment screens. Mm -hmm. There was a launch button, you could get to it, and you could check the gradebook and a grade would show up. But all the in process, any of that workflow, that's the the value add of uh, assignments, uh, not so much. And the part that I think is super, super cool is being able to go into grade and click on the name and have the LTI submission come up. I just think that's awesome. Yeah. Because before, none of that was surfaced in the assignment tool. And historically, we, 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 if you go through our assignments code, you see hundreds, if not thousands of lines of code that are specially for Turnitin to make this kind of a flow kind of work. The whole content review service, all this stuff. If you think about with all of these features, especially as we improve them a little bit and add a little more to them with extensions, um, you don't need a proprietary Turnitin things quite so much, right? And so there's a lot of tools that once they see how this works, um, they're going to give us a lot, a lot more uh, rich uh, options, both free and commercial tools. We'll start using this and, and then the assignments tool is just going to be like amazing. But I think, I think it's, it's great that we do this early because we're really validating the spec before the world's starting to use it. And I do like going back to IMS and saying, well, it was close. Yeah, we need this one other thing. And um, so I'll, I'll, go, I'll go figure that out and I'll build something. Um, and, uh, and, and, and again, once we get this back to 21.2, then I will, my, my creativity will come back to me. Right now I'm just kind of always nervous until it's done and the release is out. I don't like opening up sort of, a land war in Russia at the same time. So, um, so we'll, it'll probably be two weeks before I feel confident enough to, to go back in and start adding the features. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's good because we don't meet again for another two weeks. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, this I think it's going to take people a little time to to kind of start playing with it, start using it. And then uh, I'm sure we'll get more feedback from folks that are getting input from faculty that and, are actually using it um, on saying how they think it should work. And by 21.3, we might have both the right navigation back and a little bit more of this state exchange stuff. I mean, that it's not, none of it is right, like super scary rocket science. The code that you're seeing now, that was a lot of code. Um, and make, making it basically work where the data is going back and forth, that was a lot of code. But the, the remaining things to fix are not in the same category of risk or difficulty or complexity. So that's good.
Very cool. Well, thank you again, Chuck. Um, if nobody else has any questions for him, I'm going to switch over to um, JIRAs. So we'll take a look at the JIRA that Christina had suggested. Let me go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see about it. screen share won't be too choppy. Um, all right, so this is the JIRA. It's about the, the total or relative weight um, in the grade book. So Christina, do you want to kind of take us through this, explain a little bit um, about it since this one was one of yours? Sure. Um, Tiffany created uh, this JIRA to, um, since she noticed, um, if you use categories in the grade book, there is a total that includes the um, total number of points included in that category. However, if your category includes the drop um, or keep logic, that total reflects the total number of items in the gradebook not incorporating or not taking into account um, what's being dropped. So if, say, you have a category with, you know, as she did here, the two 10-point items and one is the lowest is dropped, it's still showing total is 20, um, where Tiffany was saying it should show the total out of 10. Um, I suggested this to the teaching and learning because um, if uh, the, Tiffany and I went back and forth in the comments on the JIRA for a while, um, my concern is for categories that have the equal weight, it's not going to drop a set number of points. For one student, it could drop 10 points. For one student, it could be 12. For another student, it could be 15, depending on which item is dropped. So, so um, Tiffany's solution was for the equal weight categories more to have it show um, like NA. And I don't necessarily want to lose that information. So I'm throwing it to the wisdom of the group. What should that total say when we have categories with items being dropped? That's an interesting conundrum. So the equal weight categories um, will drop everything by the same amount of weight, regardless of the point value of the individual item. It, it, the equal weight columns will drop entirely by percentages, regardless of what the point weight is. Right. So if you've got a equal weight category, it will drop an 85% um, 50 point assignment before it would drop the 90% 10 point assignment. So, like I said, I'm yeah, I sure would suggest add, having the percent instead of the points, but that's not really useful information because it's always going to be 100 percent. Exactly. Whereas I see I see the total points um, being useful for the instructor to make sure that everything that's supposed to be in that category is in that category. If you know you're supposed to have 15 10 point items within that category and you're dropping the lowest three. If it says it's out of 150 points, you know you've got all 10 or, you know, all 15 of them in there. Mm -hmm. So I see the value in that information. Um, Tiffany is arguing it would be more valuable if that shows solely what that category is being calculated out of. So for categories that aren't dropping anything, it'd be the exact same number. But for categories that are dropping things, we run into this conundrum. Right. And so since the uh, back and forth in the JIRA comments uh, showed Tiffany, I, I, don't, I don't think Tiffany and I would agree on that. So I figured throw it to the group and see what others think. Anybody have any thoughts on that one? 
sticky one. I wonder if there's a way you could show kind of two sets of information, you know, like show the the total points for the purpose that you indicated, like this is how many items, the total fine point value of items without dropping anything. I mean, that's way too wordy and you wouldn't want it to have all that text in there, but that would essentially be what that number would be. Um, and then maybe like a, like a net total, like how much is actually calculated as part of the grade. Gross points and net points after the, the dropping has happened. A couple of people typing. Yeah, it would also mess with the UI. I mean, we've got a lot of info in the column area as it is, so it would add more. Not great. So Jennifer is saying in the example, if the person got a nine and an eight, the eight would drop, but they would still have a total of nine, not 10. Um, well, the, the person would, but the category, I think, is what we're talking about here. And the category would be out of 10 points because it's there's two items worth 10 points, but one of them is being dropped. So what's counted in the actual grade is 10 points, which would, works out okay if, if they're all the same amount. But if you're doing the equal weighting and one thing is five points and another thing is 25 points um, and it drops the five point item, then your total of 30 points doesn't accurately reflect the um, percentages uh, of each item. That makes sense. Dave says, ick. <laughs> yeah, it's messy. So, Christina, remind me again what your suggestion was. I actually did more testing and I don't think my solution would necessarily work the best either. I had initially proposed um, in Gradebook, if you're familiar with, if you don't have categories and weighting set up, if you just have categories or no categories, um, you can view the points in the course grade where it would have square bracket, um, student points out of total points possible. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. So I was suggesting including that in the category total, like where it says 100% for Albert Albertson, having it there showed, you know, 10 out of 10 to show how many points that students was being calculated out of. And that then if there was a category that had the um, equal weight, one student could be 10 out of 15 and the other could be 20 out of 25. And that would also then take into account graded, ungraded, excused, whatever. But I think with the way equal weight works, that information might be confusing because it does not, the points necessarily would not necessarily match the percentage in that category because of how it calculates it. Yeah. So like I said, any way we go, there's going to be inconsistencies. Yeah, I mean, I think possibly that the least objectionable, it's not ideal, but the least objectionable for me anyway would be since there's no way to accurately represent it, if it's an equally weighted with different point items, just to have, you know, 
not applicable or or just a note saying, you know, equally weighted, so you can't get the total. Um, kind of like when you uh, choose a, a percentage based grade book, it won't let you display just the points to students. Is it's not really an accurate representation. Jennifer's saying maybe this is why the previous gradebook didn't show total point values for categories. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be. <laughs> um, you know what might help with this? is one that we, I think we're talking about a couple meetings ago, was that um, summary screen that shows all the points for everything, like that screen that used to live in uh, Gradebook Classic. Because I think the, what I got from what you said, Christina, was that the, the having the total points was just to make sure that all of the items were accounted for. But if you had a summary screen like that, maybe you could count them up a little bit easier and you wouldn't need it in the, the column header. If you give me this, I will fight. I will stop fighting Tiffany on this Jira. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think Last time around, we kind of came to consensus on um, what that should look like, the, the screen anyway. The placement of it, whether or not it should be in a tab or a button. I think we had said that at that time we preferred button, and then I saw some comments in JIRA that people preferred tabs. And honestly, I don't really care which one as long as it looks OK in the interface. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that we're trying to minimize the number of tabs. So yeah. I think um, if the concern we can, with the white box was um, being able to zoom in yeah. and accessibility. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if those are issues, I have no problem having a tab as long as we have a good way to display it that is user friendly. Um, but I think the, the list we had pretty much settled on um, how that should work. So I think that might suffice to give the information that we're not really getting here. Um, provided we can make that other JIRA happen. Summary page solves, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. summary pages, if the information you recall, I want to keep would still be available, which is yeah. how many points are available total in each category. So an instructor can easily make sure they've got everything in the grade book that needs to be in there. It doesn't solve the JIRA. It resolves my objection to Tiffany's proposed solution. Right. So I will mark this one after the call as TL reviewed and we're going to weigh in in favor of Tiffany's solution unless there's any objections from anyone. Have an objection, please let me know. Dave, did you have an objection or you're just kind of wondering how this fits in with that other JIRA we were talking about? Okay, but you're fine with um, our consensus to say NA is acceptable for this particular JIRA. Yes, okay, great. All right, so I will mark that up after the call and we are just about out of time. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop screen sharing here. Um, our next meeting is December 1st, and um, we have an item on the agenda for that meeting. Um, Josh is going to take us through the roadmap a little bit. He's going to have incorporated some of the feedback from the virtual conference sessions and give us an, another opportunity to look it over and comment on it um, if you've not already seen it or if you want to see it now that it's been revised. Um, so we'll be doing that on December 1st. 
And we're still looking for, um, you know, agenda ideas for the 15th. Um, that'll be our last meeting of the year. Um, so if you have any thoughts on something you really want to see more about, let me know or let Charles know between now and the 15th so we can try to get something lined up for that meeting. And um, with that, I will let you all get on about your day. So thanks for joining us. and. See you in a couple of weeks.